Hey what's up guys, I'm Organix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how navigation mesh works in Godot. So as you can see here I've got this basic scene set up with just some cubes and I've got like a ramp here. Well it's just a cube but stretched out to be a ramp. And uh, yeah, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be applying some navigation mesh to this level. And uh, yeah, if you do find that this tutorial does help it help you out and uh, you do enjoy it, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And let's get right into it. So what we're going to be doing first off is, uh, so make sure you have your level made up. And what you want to do is uh, on your parent node of your scene, you want to go right click, add child node, and then you want to type nav. And then where it says navigation region 3D, you want to use this because this will be for our navigation mesh. Alrighty, so once you have your navigation region 3D in the scene, what you need to do is you need to actually uh, fill in the navigation mesh here. So where it says empty, uh, make sure you have navigation region 3D selected and where it says empty, just click on it and then go new navigation mesh. And boom, now we've got some navigation mesh added on. Now as you can see here, uh, when we've got navigation region 3D selected, you actually have the option to bake the nav mesh. And if we do that right now, as you can see, nothing happens. So what we need to do is we need to get our level components here. So as you can see, I've got my floor, and then I've got my block, and then my ramp, and then my other three blocks. So I'm going to select these. And then what you want to do is you want to move them underneath your navigation region 3D. Now, you don't have to do this with all the objects in your scene, just the objects that you want to be part of your navigation mesh. So if there's any objects in your scene that you don't want to be part of your navigation mesh, then you don't have to drag them underneath the navigation region 3D. So now that we've got our objects underneath the navigation region 3D, we can just press bake nav mesh and boom, as you can see, some nav mesh has been generated. Now there are a bunch of settings to play around with to make sure that your nav mesh is right for you because as you can see uh, this nav mesh probably isn't uh, perfect and there is probably some ways we can improve it of course so uh, how about I show you guys how to actually make some changes to your navigation mesh so you can improve it based on how your scene is. So uh, with your navigation region 3D selected uh, as you can see, we've got all these like variables and stuff like that you can play around with. You can enable the uh, nav mesh if you want to, or disable it, that sort of stuff. And uh, what you want to do is, where it says navigation mesh, you want to click on this, and you'll get like this drop down menu, and you'll get all these little uh, other drop down menus as well, such as the sampling, the sampling I mean, which you don't really have to worry about, I mean, I don't worry about any of this, um, and then we have this, I don't really mess around with this either. So yeah, um, if there's like anything in this tutorial that I don't talk about, like uh, this sort of stuff here, which I don't really play around with, you guys can play around with that for yourself of course. But uh, yeah, so here in the cells drop down menu, as you can see, we've got one for the size and the height. Now, uh, with the cell height, uh, if we change that, what will happen is if we bake the nav mesh again after changing it, the actual height of the nav mesh is changed. So if you want your nav mesh to be more closer to the floor, so then it's more approximate, because um, something that I noticed is uh, when it's at the uh, 0.25 meter level height, when baking the nav mesh, as you can see, it's not really correct on this ramp here, but then when we lower the height of the cells, as you can see, and then we bake the nav mesh, the nav mesh is more approximate around the ramp, like it just looks more correct. So if you guys want to lower your cell height, uh, that's totally fine, because, you know, it does actually make your nav mesh a bit more approximate to uh, how you would want it to be. And then we've got the cell size. I don't really play around with this, but um, if you want to see how that looks, um, that's pretty much how that looks. So yeah, um, there's a bunch of options to play around with. You can play around with the cell size and the cell height. Uh, what I mainly play around with is the cell height. I don't really play around with the cell size. I usually just keep that at 0 0.25. 
but yeah, you guys can play around with all these sorts of options if you want to. Now we have the option for our navigation mesh agent, so this just has to do with like the uh, height and stuff like that and the radius to uh, do with the nav mesh, so then our navigation agents can correctly traverse around it based on their settings. So if we were to set our radius to 1 for example, and then we bake the nav mesh, as you can see, uh, less of the nav mesh is able to be explored because it is more narrow. So basically what the radius does is um, based on a smaller value, right, so if we set it to 0 0.1 for example, this will basically make the uh, navigation mesh a lot larger and a lot less narrow. But then if we set the radius of the agent to a higher value, then that will make the rate that that will make the navigation region more uh, more narrow. And the reason as to why it does that, because it's probably a more larger agent which needs more room to move around. That would obviously make the navigation mesh more, like, narrow, so then it's not colliding in with the walls and stuff like that, because that would look real weird, and yeah. So with the height of the navigation agent, if we were to change this to, like, 0 0.1, for example, yeah, it doesn't really, uh, it didn't really change too much there with, uh, with this scene. Um, it probably would, of course, if you were to, uh do it on other sorts of scenes, but um, basically if you change the height of your, uh, of the agent value, basically it would allow you to like, um, traverse under like, uh, like smaller, r like parts and stuff like that here. Let me, let me try to show you guys. It's more easier to show you guys than to explain. So if we were to have this uh, cube here, for example, right, let me just stretch it out so it's covering across this, across this I mean. So if we have our height set to 1.5, as you can see, um, we can't actually traverse underneath this because the agent value is set to 1.5. And that would mean that the height of the agents would be too large to go underneath this. But if we set this to a smaller value like 0 0.1, then as you can see, we can actually traverse under this now because the agent value, I mean the agent height value is a lot smaller. So yeah, that's what the agent height value does. And then we have the max climb. This basically determines, like, um, the, uh, max, like, basically here. Let me just show you guys. It's a lot easier to just show than explain. So if I was to set this to, like, 4, for example, right? This would allow our navigation agents to basically climb really high because the max climb basically determines, like, our, how, like, high our, our um, navigation agents can climb. So if it's set to a really small value, our navigation agents won't be able to climb at like a higher height. So if we set the max climb value to a smaller value like 0 0.1, then that would mean our, uh, our navigation agents wouldn't be able to climb as high as they would. So as you can see now that we've set the max climb to 0 0.1, our navigation agents won't actually be able to traverse up the ramp. So yeah, the higher the max climb value, the higher the navigation agents can actually climb, and you know, <laughs> imagine making a game where the navigation mesh was like this. That would actually be very interesting to uh, see a game like this, actually. But yeah, so um, there's a bunch of settings you can play around with, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of fun to be had with the navigation mesh. The navigation mesh is a little bit messed up here, probably because of the navigation agent height. Yeah, there we go, there, that's better. And then we've got the max slope, so this basically determines the angle at which navigation agents can travel at. So if I was to set this to like 8, for example, as you can see, we can no longer traverse up the ramp. But if we set it to a higher value, like say 90, then as you can see, we can traverse at on the ramp. Now we don't need the 90 value to reverse on the ramp, we can just do it at the normal 45 value one if we want to, but yeah. If you do need a max slope of 90 degrees for some reason, whatever, then you can do that of course. And then we've got regions, I don't really play around with this, but you guys can if you want to of course. And then we've got edges, um, again this is something I don't really play around with personally, but you guys can if you want to. And then the polygons, this basically just sets the vertices per polygon. And then we've got details, you can play around this sort of stuff if you want to as well. And then uh, this is another value I actually play around with called filters. So this filter here, this first one, it's called low hanging obstacles. And as the description says, if true, marks non-walkable spans as walkable if their maximum is within agent max climb of a walkable neighbor. 
So if we were to mark this as on, and then we bake the nav mesh, um, not much changes for this, um, for this scene. But uh, I guess it depends on the structure of your scene, of course. I don't really play around with this value. But um, yeah, the one I do play around with though, the one that I've actually played around with when making Xmas Slaughter, for example, is Ledge Spans. And the reason as to why I played around with this is because it sort of approximates the nav mesh more. Now with the ledge spans, as you can see by its description, it says, if true, mark spans that are ledges as non-walkable. Now if I mark this as true in this scene, um, and I bake the nav mesh, it kind of stuffs up the nav mesh. For example, we can't walk up the ramp anymore, and then uh, we can't even go underneath uh, this here anymore. The reason as to why I use the ledge spans option in Xmas Slaughter is because it actually helped out with the nav mesh in that game, and I guess because the structure of the nav- and I guess because the structure of my level might have been a bit different, that actually helped out with it, because the reason as to why I use the uh, ledge spans filter, and this could be an example of how you might want to use it in your game if it works out for your game, is um, I found out that my AIs, my elf AIs, were getting stuck around the ramps, and I found that by a uh, marking the ledge spans filter as on, as true basically, um, that actually approximated the nav mesh more a bit around the ramps, and it actually allowed the elves to not get as stuck as they used to, so the elves were actually more free to move around the ramps. So that could be a way you do use the ledge spans filter, um, any of these filters could help you with your level of course. It's just all trial and error, every, every different thing is going to work for every different person. So the way the ledge spans filter works in Xmas Slaughter, I might find it might not help with a level like this for example, because when I turn it off, the nav mesh is actually better. And then we've got walkable low heights, and as by the description it says, if true, marks walkable spans is not walkable if the clearance above the span is less than agent height. So if we mark this as on, let's see how this changes the nav mesh. And it didn't really change all that much. So overall, um, you know, playing around with the nav mesh in Godot is of course just trial and error. It all depends on your game and how your level is structured of course. But there are a bunch of different settings you can play around with to get your nav mesh just right for you. And also, if you don't understand what a certain variable means, you can of course just look at the description of it. So let's say for example you don't know what a uh, past geometry, uh, whatever the full thing it is here says, um, you know, you can just take a look at the description and you can see that it says geometry, past geometry type. Uh, determines which type of nodes will which uh, determines which type of nodes will be passed as geometry. See past geometry type for possible values, and then you can just read all these uh, sub descriptions here, basically explaining how this all works. So that is something actually really good about Godot is there is a lot more uh, explanation to things. You can actually uh, you know. Uh, enter the documentation inside of the engine if you want to. You can just take a look at these smaller descriptions. It is pretty good. So basically with this past geometry type option, uh, as you can see by default it has mesh instances selected, which basically means that the geometry of our navigation mesh is going to be based off of the mesh instances in our scene. However, if we change this to static colliders, that will then mean that the geometry of our navigation mesh will then be based off of the uh, static bodies in our scene. So as you can see here in the hierarchy, um, these objects here, floor, block, ramp, all these, um, they're all static body 3Ds. And if you want the geometry of the navigation mesh to be based off of uh, just not only either the uh, static colliders or the mesh instances, if you want it to be based off of both, you can do that as well. So you can do both uh, static colliders and mesh instances. But yeah. But usually what I do is just mesh instances. That's what I did for Xmas Slaughter. I didn't even mess around with this option for Xmas Slaughter since I didn't even bother uh, seeing what it was. But yeah, so yeah, again guys, if you don't know how certain things here work, um, just uh, take a look at the descriptions here on the navigation mesh, and that will help you out a bunch. So anyways guys, that's basically the basics of uh, doing navigation mesh in Godot. 
if you guys did enjoy this tutorial or you did find that it helped you out a bit be sure to like comment and subscribe for more so overall thank you guys for watching the video and uh, by the way if you guys haven't already be sure to wishlist my game you are liam shadow memories on steam it would definitely mean a lot and i am proud of how the game's going right now it's going to be a you know a big game with a lot of content packed into it and i can't wait for you guys to eventually try it out um, I actually recently uh, made a full game trailer for it, the first full game trailer for it, and the game has improved quite a bit since then in terms of its like looks, because I've added some new post-processing effects, which I think just really does make the game look a bunch better. And plus just overall, the overall game and all is just improving, and yeah, I can't wait for you guys to play it. And um, another thing I do want to mention before I end this video as well is I've recently released a Christmas game called Xmas Slaughter. It's basically an FPS, an FPS platformer with some horror themes where you're a psychotic elf who wants to kill uh, all the other elves at the North Pole and uh, end Christmas once and for all. So if you want to go check that out, be sure to. It's just a silly game. It's not meant to be anything too serious. So be sure to go check it out and I hope you guys do like it. It is free of course, so you do have nothing to lose by checking it out and yeah anyways guys um all that aside thank you all for watching and i'll see you all next time bye bye